Hello and welcome to another budget and legged video. Now we have a 2014 Audi A3 and we're going to go through a few things that this launch can do to it. Again, I'm not going to be able to go through everything, there's just too much, but we've just finished a service and it does say uh, oil service due. So the first thing we're going to do is reset the oil light or the service light, should I say, and it should be really straightforward. I think it's just gone, yeah, it's just gone saying. So we need to select the car, which is an Audi. Ignition on. Yes. Automatic reset. Um, well, I'll go there. And we need to go. It's the engine light lamp here, it's setting. I think it's this one. Yeah, this is the one, so 10,000. Let that boom, boom, and there we go. I think that was the one. So let's just turn ignition off, ignition back on. Boom, there we go. How quick and easy was that? Now we do have a dip light gone, but we'll do that in a minute. So we'll just double check. We've definitely got the service light off, and there we go, boom, done. How quick was that lovely jubbly so let's just go back home we can go into the actual let's go out of here quit yes now we can see we've got the brake reset so if you're doing brake pads let's just go into that the ignition is on at the minute oh don't start this again moving on me Audi, yes. It's an A3. We can read the codes even though there should be no codes on it because there's no codes in the car. And there we go, no codes. So we can... It just checks for codes before it lets us do it, which is handy. And there we go, we've just deactivated it, so we can now change the brake pads. It goes in to make sure there's no codes first, there's no codes stored or faults stored, which is really good. So we can go out there. Uh, yes. And we'll just... Put that back. Again, just read the code to make sure it's all good before we start. I'm just kind of showing you how easy it is to do things with this. And there we go. We're back on like we was lovely so we can just go out of here get back to our menu so i mean you see how easy it was to reset the service light you see how easy it is to change the brake pedal or the brake pads um just keep getting interrupted but let's just go into injector and see what we can do i'm sure we can program injectors with this again it depends on your car some cars don't need primary programming they actually learn themselves some do some pumps need programming, like the pilots need learning and stuff like that. Um, again, that's just going to tell us, yeah, that's okay. Again, I'm not going to really do anything. So it's going to ask us first, is there any faults in the system? So it's going to check, and there isn't. So we'll just click Injector 1, for example. Again, I'm not going to do this, but... And there we go. We can enter new data and we can actually do programming and stuff. But again, not going to do that because we don't need to. And I don't want to start causing problems when we don't need to. So let's just go out. Uh, 
So you got TPMS reset, um, you know, DPF regen, brake bleeding, um, just as you can see, there's just loads and loads. But again, I'm not going to go into all of it because it would just take way too long in the video. All right, let's just go into OBD2, see what we can do in there with this. I don't, every time I turn the camera on, it just keeps moving on the steering wheel. Um, we've got some onboard monitoring, which we can do. Again, you know, troubleshooting diagnostics and stuff. Obviously, the engine isn't switched on, but, you know, you can see some of the stuff you can do there. Um, and that's for the boost valve, EGR valve. Again, you know, the engine isn't started, but we can go through some things there so you know you got code for EGR valves you can see if they're sticking or anything like that they're working like they're supposed to so that's handy obviously we've got our live data if we've got an issue um then we can go to see where's our live data live data now we've got 40 data pids in OBD and I think there's like 480 or something in uh, the other data which we'll go through in a second but let's go like throttle just just tick a few of these so we can maybe graph temperature fuel rail it's always a good one let's just go okay right this is not going to stay there stay there all right let me just turn the engine on now you're going to stay there yeah not going to rev properly because we're ticking over i'm sorry about this keep moving this is so frustrating we haven't got the camera on this doesn't move at all let's just graph all them and see now again we can only rev to like 2000 or something because it's not uh, in gear but you can see even with four data pids just how quick and fast it reacts now the red one gives you exactly what it is down there. Red is fuel pressure. And then we've got throttle uh, position sensor and all that sort of stuff. So you can see, you know, you can graph stuff very easy. It's very, very responsive, which is really good. Again, not gonna go through them all. Again, we have the, um, the battery up at the top, which is really handy, especially when you are, you know, doing things diagnosing and stuff you really want to make sure your battery is charging because if your battery isn't charging that could be a lot of your problems so let's just quit out of this we'll go into let me do this auto detect once i get into that system we'll see what we can do in here all right so what it's doing now is it's health check so it's going through some of the common modules just to see and it'll give you a report afterwards which is really handy Obviously our system is okay. Not only that, it's now saved that report into the actual scan tool itself. You can see we've got an Audi 2014 tells us the kilometers that the car is done. And as you can see, that is absolutely, oh, is it gonna focus on both of them, camera? No. That is absolutely bang on. So let's just go out of here and we can then you can go into each of these systems so let's just go into we'll go into engine people's asking me about bi-directional controls and stuff i'm not sure yet what this can and can't do because i'm still learning with it i'm still kind of going through with it and everything um we have no obviously problems this is what I really do like module data or module information so we can see you know if you if you're looking for a part number for a module and you can't get to it without you know stripping loads of stuff you can go into each module and it'll give you the part number which is really handy so let's just go to uh, live data and I believe yeah 480 pids in live data here and obviously there's just no way I'm going to be able to go through all these um, we just kind of scan through some of them. I'll scan through them quite quick and you can pause it to see what it can do because 480 is a lot. I 
as you can see there's just we're still on seas <laughs> i think it's a very boring video if i just scan through all this it is unbelievable the sensors the stuff that this can actually read I mean, yeah, there's just no point me going through all. I mean, just look at it. There's just tons and tons and tons of stuff. Once I start doing more diagnostic videos with this, you'll start seeing what this can do. It's very difficult to go through something, especially when the car's got no faults, because, you know, what do I click into? It's just difficult to know when I'm doing a diagnostics or diagnosis, it's a lot easier because why isn't this just staying there? As soon as I turn the camera on, this fucking thing just moves. Jesus Christ! Stay! Now, it's not staying, jeez. Let me just pick a few of these and we'll um, scan this on just before I start losing my, uh, losing my head. Right, I've just picked a few. I really don't like the fact that it's on the bottom, the, the way it connects into. If it was on the top, what I normally do is just put it over the steering wheel and the thing stays still. Only a minor thing, but it's still, it's annoying. But anyway, so we've got a few uh, data pids up here. You can only select 24 at a time, which is more than enough because any more you are just on any scan tool slowing it down. It is very responsive even with this. Let's just go to combined and we can select Let's just select all that. It's moving again. Oh, God. Now, you can see it reacts more or less instantly, which is really, really good. And what this is absolutely fantastic for, when you're driving down the road, you need to monitor ABS sensors, you know, high-pressure pump injectors. Whatever you need to monitor, you can drive down the road with this graph on, and you can see if there's any dropouts, you know, on ABS sensors or when you hit third gear, does the high pressure pump suddenly lose pressure or anything like that. That's when it's really, really good to have graph data like this. But there's 480 PIDs to go through. There's just no way I can go through all this scan tools, what it can and what it can't do, because I don't fully know myself yet. I've only been playing with it myself and I just don't know what it can or can't do. So far, everything I've asked it to do, it's done and it's done brilliant. You saw how easy it was to reset the um, engine light or the service light on this, you know, how quick and easy it is just to reset everything. It is just, um, it's brilliant. So far, so good. Um, I will keep you up to date if we have any other issues. Anything you would like to see from it, um, just let me know. Oh, God. This wouldn't be an issue if I wasn't filming. It's only because I'm filming. You can see look, all the stuff we can do here. Passenger size, trigger, airbags. Um, you know, so we should be able to get some. Let's see if we go to... Let's just select some. Yeah, so we can see if it's there or not there. If it's seat belts are connected um there's, there's a hundred is even 111 of these do you know um let's see if i can quickly see some air or seat belt switch you know so we can see if the seat belt is connected and stuff like that oh focus second row i'm in the front at the minute so yeah i mean you can just there's just loads and loads of stuff you can monitor on this on this car through this scan tool there's just there's no way i can go through absolutely everything if there's anything specific you'd like me to go through providing i have the car let me know once i start um you know once i get a car in with an issue i will i will get this scan tool first oh god <laughs> i will get this scan tool first and uh, you know we can do uh, proper diagnostics on it and see what it can and can't do i obviously can't do that until i've got a broken car this one just came in for a service there's nothing actually wrong with it um but there we go so that's that's the uh, launch crp 429c on a 2014 audi so there we go people um i really do like it it does 
lots of stuff i'm sure it can do an awful lot more than what i'm showing i really would like to start showing a lot more of uh, the actual resets we've done the we've done a service like reset i've shown you how it can do the brakes you know to release the brake pedal um battery reset tpmf reset uh dpf regen but again we have to wait for them cars to come in because i'm not just going to start doing regens on cars and stuff and we don't need to come in injector you can see how easy it is to program injectors through this so you can see you know it does an awful lot of stuff which is what i really really like um bi-directional controls i'm just not sure at the minute what it can and can't do uh we'll try and get into that in a little bit more but that's it people so look hope it helps please like share subscribe all the usual don't forget links up here links down below i can't let go of this because it's just gonna fall again stop oh mm. So there we go, people. That's it. Don't forget my links to my Facebook, Instagram, Patreon, all down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted.